Hello everyone and welcome back to the for now last review of Made in Abyss for the last episode which was a double length episode with 45 minutes about this length and oh boy it was a ride it was going from terrifying horrible to hitting the emotions hard and having a ninja cutting onions next to you up to the fluffiness the lightheartedness a beautiful ending scene and maybe a setup for a possible second season but oh boy oh boy of this season this is the best last episode next to recreators because this ending was awesome as well as an epilogue but this episode we had so much happening and to be honest the backstory for Nanachi and Mitty it was it was terrible not in the sense that the way the story was told was terrible but what happened to them was horrible and that white whistle that Ozan warned us about that guy he is damn he's insane he's scary remember when we first met Ozan and I was like yeah she's scaring the hell out of me compared to this guy Ozan is like the nice granny from next door who gives you cookies every once in a while who is super nice to you and she's like that yeah grandparent that's not related to you kind of grannies you know what I mean yeah Ozan is like this compared to Bondred that we had in this episode and man this guy is so messed up he is so fucked up it's incredible and I'm so hard looking forward to what would happen in a possible second season especially with that guy because he's still deep down in the abyss doing a kind of research thing and back when Nanaji was living in poverty who was going around picking the least disgusting food from garbage to survive because she was not like the others who were stealing or begging and doing that kind of stuff and then one day Bondred came and he was like yeah children I have a mission come with me and then they went down to the abyss and there the children were all in one room and one by one they were picked out and they left the room and they never came back what we found out is that that he actually has something like a relic an elevator that can go down to the I believe it was the sixth layer yeah the sixth layer where the curse is the loss of humanity or death and with this elevator or the relic the thing about is they are two chambers and the effect of the curse can move into only one chamber so yeah and I don't really have to say that we also saw Mitty before she became what we know who or what she became of and really energetic lovely girl but then we saw how she became like this terrifying it's the only word I can say it's absolutely terrifying and the thing is with Bondred 
he was doing it well he was wearing a helmet but he was probably doing it with a dead pen like it was I don't know buttering your bread or something like this and now I clearly see what they mean that basically every white whistle has a screw loose or more than one so now she was sneaking out she was overhearing a talk with Bondred and one of the other people who were helping them or him because that guy was like yeah but in a human way it's terrible what you're doing Bondred right so they're children and even from foreign countries and then Bondred was like yeah I am not going to use them like humans so we had this and then had was Nanaji running around looking for Mitty? She was terrified. She found Mitty in that chamber. But then Bondred showed up and he was like, Well, yeah, it's now your time. So, and the previous experiments, they did not really happen, so, or they were not successful because he tried to put something in there, but it couldn't really take on the curse. So, yeah, and. He put Nanachi in the second chamber as well. The elevator went down to the sixth layer. And there we had all of the uh, previous children who became really deformed, stuff like this, and it was terrifying. And then the elevator was shooting up uh, real fast. And then we saw how energy became from a normal human to the bunny we know and love. Also we saw how in a real detailed way how Mitty changed from her human form to what she became and then that there's another side effect that she can't really die so the only side effect of this is that through the experiments, crushing her limbs or dismembering them, whatever, nothing. She was kind of resurrecting, coming back. She was not dying. The only thing was that, well, yeah, she was even more deformed, so you could kind of see this, and she lost an eye. But in the end, then, no, she couldn't take it anymore she was running away which we saw I re think it was last week's episode or the week before and when she was on the fourth layer she was trying to figure out a lot of things how to maybe send N Mitty off but nothing really happened and this she asked Reg to do it with his incinerator, which he did, and the scene was seriously emotional to the point of my eyes watering real hard and then having Naughty cry and even Reg who was only there for a short time, he did not even know at all or experienced what they have gone through but yet he was crying with Nanachi and it was a real powerful scene and it really shows you that yeah even though what Nanachi did or why she wished for it it made sense in that sense because well, what about Mitty when Nanachi is not there anymore and something like this. So she did it for a good way also because that it's clear that Mitty can't really or is not really human anymore and it's most of the time just reflexes and stuff like this but we so that she 
is capable of feeling pain so it's basically just suffering for her and yeah now she just wants that she will be able to rest in peace even though it's really painful for her but in the end I even I think that this is the better way for Mitty to end her suffering which brings us to the second part of the episode when Rico came back yeah she woke up and remember that dream we had with Rico being kinda in the dark place and she was looking through the hole and there was another eye with a crying sound yep that's literally Mitty they were kinda connected and like it was hinted in this episode I really think it's through the abyss and when we had the topic of the soul of the dead person who died in the abyss that this goes to someone who wants to live it's it kind of came full circle with Rico because she woke up not that much not yeah not that much of a long time after Mitty passed away and it really gives me so many questions about the abyss what the heck is this and I really love that we don't really have explanations for it so this this is more of a fantastical thing and good lord the comeback scene with Rico and Nanachi cooking, Rick waking up and then we had some comedy scenes with eating Nanachi's reaction to good food stuff like this and even when she brought them to the kinda hot spring and she was on the lookout she was like yeah Rick get into it I will be on lookout don't worry we had a real funny scene with yeah like kind of getting a boner because he was in this hot spring with Rico real funny I was laughing out loud it was really really good after the heavy things of the first uh, first half first part of the episode and then Rico was asking Nanachi to come along which was really nice especially because Rick was asking Nanachi or forcing her to promise to not end her own life after Mitty is gone and she played off like well yeah I have to take care of Rico so yeah but Rick was like yeah and even after this so it's kind of a cruel way to put it from Nanji's perspective but now she has someone to travel with and I'm really looking forward to it because Nanji is really a great character a nice teasing character but also a character that there is a, m a lot more to it than you see from the initial comedy and teasing all the kind and then we had the preparation for the continuation of the adventure in the abyss with making preserved medicine or waterproof things, a new bag and they set up a balloon to head up to the city and it was so nice to see the harsh travel of the balloon being at the uh, lookout point which was found by the little boy I totally forgot that name but Ozan's appreciate it so, yeah and the balloon was repaired 
send back into the abyss to go up and then it was found by yeah, kids we know so it all came full circle and god damn this ending was beautiful which brings us to the cliffhanger or maybe a cliffhanger so yeah it, it, it's really extremely screaming like second season second season we want to do it we know you want it as well so yeah which was a lot of lights with name tags on it and then there was a few lights that are out and Bondred saw that a new light was out and he reacted the words oh 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 it looks like Nanachi managed to do it and he's looking forward to see her again because this light was obviously for Mitty and yeah what a heavy episode and what I really loved about it was the entire ride of this double length episode from the terrible things we saw in the past what was happening the horrors of a crazy white whistle what he forced upon innocent children to the emotional farewell to Mitty and going back to the light-hearted comedy scenes and then having this beautiful ending song while watching the balloon going up and having the trio prepare for their next adventure. All in all, this is seriously of this year and it's already the yeah, third season. It's one of the best shows of this year. So I really really hope we will get a second season. Otherwise I will have to start reading the manga. I really want to do it but I don't know if I'm prepared yet and from what I've seen on Reddit there were not that many chapters even adapted in it so yeah it looks like it's really faithful to the source material and as an anime only watcher I can definitely say that this is a fucking amazing episode. The show, it's incredible from the music. Seriously, the componist Kevin Penkin, he did such a great job for the music here. The animation quality is really, really good. The background drawings, they are fucking beautiful. And the voice acting, top tier. So yeah, it's all in all an amazing show, a great ride, we have all of it, we have comedy, we have the adventure, we have some action, we have tension, excitement, we have despair, horror, we have so many terrible things going on as well. and. Seriously, this with Bondred, I'm really questioning what is worse, the creatures in the abyss or a human down there? And to be honest, my guess goes that the human is probably the worst being down in the abyss. It may not be as strong or whatever in terms of fighting power as uh, some of the creatures but in terms of doing terrible things yeah this is without a doubt terrifying but yeah like I've said all in all an amazing episode and god damn it this is one of the shows I will probably rewatch not soon but Maybe in the beginning of the next year or something like this. Just because it's 
this good and I think a second watch will give you a nice new perspective on this as well so yeah I think I will watch it and yeah I'm really stunned with the power of the final episode and to have a double length last episode it's really something so they really had the time to show us a lot of things and then end it on a really nice note with a little maybe that hey this is going to continue surely you can say that it's one of the yeah go and read the source material but it could also be like yeah a second season would also work right so I really wish we will get a second season and I'm really curious to see where this is going in terms of story because there are some really dark themes going on and so many mysteries I really want to see it with the beauties of the anime yeah. damn what am I supposed to do now the ending left me hanging there so maybe I will go to sleep and get ready for work tomorrow but yeah I would say that's it for now I'm talking for probably around 20 minutes or something like this so yeah that's it for now and as always thanks for watching and I hope I will see you guys next time as well till then have a great time bye bye